photographers, we need to talk. I'm stuck with Adobe Lightroom and it doesn't feel good. No, 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 not the reasons you might think of now and not because I don't like Adobe Lightroom, but because I find myself in a situation where I have no choice but to use Adobe Lightroom. Quick disclaimer, this video is not for those who are either fully convinced of or fully bought into the Adobe ecosystem. So if you're happy with your setup and your future with the Adobe Suite, you can save yourself some time and skip this video. This video is for those who want to reflect on their photo management tools and workflow, maybe think of switching from one tool to the other or switching the operating system from Microsoft Windows to macOS or vice versa, or maybe even find themselves in my situation where they want to run a hybrid setup with macOS and Windows and want to edit the same photos and the same catalog on both systems. Let me first explain to you my setup and where I'm coming from so that you better understand why I am stuck with Adobe Lightroom. I have a Windows-based setup with a powerful PC here at the studio where I do a lot of my photographic work but also the video editing for this channel. At home, I used to run a Windows setup as well, plus I had a Linux machine, which you might have seen already on this channel if you're a long-term viewer. But I didn't do any photographic work on that machine, more on that later. But generally we can say I was a Windows user when it comes to my photographic workflow. For seamless photo access across my devices, I store my photos and a catalog on an external USB SSD like this one here, this ensures that I have my entire library available to me, whether I'm at the studio, at home or traveling. Last year, my setup at home changed and I switched from a Windows PC to a MacBook Pro. And this switch introduced a couple of challenges and problems. But most significantly, it limited me to Adobe Lightroom as my primary and main photo library and editor. And in this video, I want to explain to you why running a mix of macOS and Windows bound me to Lightroom. Running a purely Windows-based setup here at the studio and at home allowed me to freely choose between Lightroom, Capture One and Luminar. Talking about Luminar and Luminar Neo, if you are curious about it, let me know in the comment section below if you would be interested in a video. Having my photos and the catalog on this external drive and mapping the drive always to the same drive letter allowed me to seamlessly use all these tools on the same photos on the same drive across all my devices. Now, I already hear you typing in the comment section below, but before you hit the send button, let me stop you right there because of course this would hold true as well if you would run macOS across all your systems and you would do the same. So having all your photos on an external drive and mapping it on your systems to the same mount point will allow you to use these tools that I mentioned on the same photos across all your devices. With this out of the way, what is the problem of running multiple operating systems across your devices? After all, Lightroom, Capture One and Luminar are available on both platforms. Well, here comes the problem. The way how these different operating systems address the location of the files on your devices, be it either your laptop directly or an external drive like this one, directly impacts how the files are stored in your photo catalog when you import the photos. During the photo import process, Lightroom, Capture One and Luminar will store your photo location as an absolute file path. That means if you import your photos, for example, from your photos folder in your home directory or from an external hard drive like this one, it will record the drive letter on Windows or mount point on macOS, plus the folders and subfolders and then the file name in the catalog. If afterwards, for example, you detach an external drive 
and you attach it to another computer and that computer mounts a drive to a different mount point or in Windows assigns a different drive letter to it, the catalog will not be able to find your photos. And this presents a problem to people like me who would like to have their photo library mobile accessible to different machines on different operating systems. All these tools offer the possibility of relocating the photos. That means you can point a catalog to the new location where it can access the photos and your photos will show up again and you can continue editing. With one exception though, Luminar Neo, at least in my case, uh, whenever I do this, I connect this drive to another machine and I tell Luminar Neo where it can find the photos in the catalog, I lose my edits. I don't know if this is a bug or a feature that is not implemented yet or if I'm doing something wrong, but if you know how to do that with Luminar Neo without losing the edits, let me know in the comments section below. But let's be honest, this cannot be the solution. We cannot manually relocate the photos every time we connect an external drive with our catalog and photos to another system. This cannot be the solution. After having said all of this, you might wonder now, but Marcus, you said you're stuck with Adobe Lightroom. Does this mean that with Lightroom, I can access my catalog and the photos seamlessly across devices and operating systems if the photos and the catalogs are stored on an external drive? And a simple answer is yes. And what Adobe does is actually quite genius and maybe some of you don't even know yet what I'm about to share with you. If you store your photos in the same folder where your Lightroom catalog resides, Lightroom will import your photos with relative paths, relative to the file location where your catalog resides. And this simple trick enables you to connect your external drive containing all your photos and the catalog to different machines on different operating systems while working on the same catalog and keeping all your edits. So if you use Windows and you store your catalog on an external drive, let's say in a folder Lightroom 2024, all you have to do now is store your photos in a subfolder, let's call it photos, and then do the import. And what happens now is magic. So Lightroom will now import the photos with a relative path, meaning as a starting point where this catalog is, and then just addresses them by photos and then the subfolders down to where your image file is. Which means you can now connect this drive to Windows, Mac OS, different drive letters and mount points no matter how, Lightroom will always find your images and you can continue editing your photos. For me, this is so simple and elegant. I am baffled why the other photo management tools don't offer the same functionality. And this is why I'm stuck with Adobe Lightroom. By running a hybrid setup with Windows on the one side and macOS on the other side, I lost my freedom to choose between different photo management solutions. Unless I would limit myself to do photo editing only here at the studio with my Windows setup or on my MacBook Pro at home. Now, I hear you typing in the comment section again, so let me stop you right here. You might say, well, then ditch the Windows setup and go all in with the Mac. Or the others would say, well, ditch your MacBook Pro again. Um, well, I can tell you this won't happen for now. And this is why I'm stuck, because Adobe Lightroom is the only solution that allows me to seamlessly run this hybrid setup. I am curious to hear from you if you know of any seamless way of having your catalog on an external drive containing also all your photos connecting to different operating systems with Capture One or Luminar. So if you have any nice solution, please share it down in the comment section below. I would be grateful for any tip. And since I don't have any leverage on Skylum with Luminar nor Capture One other than maybe this video. So if you want, please uh, leave a like, help me with this video and share it. For me, there is no other option at the moment other than be either stuck with um, Adobe Lightroom or look in the open source space. 
Talking about open source tools, there is one promising tool which is called Darktable. Darktable is available on Windows, macOS, and Linux, so it makes it even more appealing to me. I tried it out. Um, the photo management workflow for me needed a little bit of time to adjust. Obviously, it's a new tool, it's complex, it can do a lot, but I found out that it can do everything I would expect from a photo management uh, and editing tool. So for me, it would be enough but guess what? It suffers from the same problem. It stores the files or the photos in the library as an absolute file path, exactly like Capture One and Luminar does. So same problem here. Um, well, Darktable is an open source tool, but I don't know if I have the right skills and maybe time to do this by myself, maybe download the code and um, do a quick hack to try if I can get it to um, have absolute file paths in a similar way that Adobe does this. But if you know someone who maybe wants to help out, um, reach out to me or leave a comment in the comment section below. And uh, yeah, let's see if we can figure something out. I hope what I described in this video makes sense to you. I know that this video is a little bit more on the technical side of things compared to my other videos, but this is an important matter to me and I know it will probably just concern very few of you, but maybe it will become a concern of you in the future, so still maybe good food for thought. Um, thank you so much for sticking with me till the end of this video. I know it was a little bit more heavy. Um, again, as I mentioned earlier, if you have any tips for me, let me know in the comment section down below. A big thank you already now for that. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.